And I'm Randy. Welcome. Welcome to the First Congregational Church. Good morning. This is a reading from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of their adversaries, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, then all are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, then all are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Don't doubt, it, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Peace be with you. Christ is risen, alleluia. May each breath in and out, in and out be a holy moment and inspiration in and all around us. Amen. The Christian church was born amidst trauma, deadly violence, and fear. A time like our own. Shortly after Jesus' death, after he greeted Mary Magdalene, the believers who hadn't left town were gathered in a knot. They were locked up in shock because of the chaos in their bodies, in their psyches, in their community. The Gospel of John tells it this way. Jesus came into their locked up space. He calmed their terror and their survivor's guilt by saying, peace be with you. Shalom. Wholeness. He showed them his scars, surrendering his healed and healing wounds in order that his beloved disciples might also be healed. Jesus shared shalom and healing. He shared breath. Hearing this story in the context of this past year when we were all locked down, locked in, locked up, the irony is evident. They had their door locked to keep something out. They were terrified grief-stricken, and surely some were full of rage, just like some of us. We were, and maybe are, terrified to breathe on one another. Knowing that our own breath could mean death helped us make a habit of masking, washing, social distancing, and locked doors. But this, this story is about the nearness, the palpable presence of life, of love, of healing. This is about leaving our locked down, locked up, locked in fear hearts to feel the breath of the risen Christ. The peace of God 
is the way humans and all creation and the divine belong to each other in harmonious existence. Shalom. Can peacemaking only happen at an unsafe distance, at close range? From this story, it seems we must be up close and personal, entering right into that locked up space in order to get close enough to the wounds to exchange breath. Blessed are those who get close enough to breathe on one another. Healing will follow? Hmm. I'd like to say yes, but I can't. We've just turned the corner on a whole year of proximity equals danger, possibly death. We have made sacrifices for the protection of ourselves, the people we love, and for utter strangers. Many or most of us are still locked up. So this is important for us now. Yes, we still need to move slowly and cautiously toward each other. Yes, we are not yet clear of the pandemic. Prepare though for the presence of the risen Christ who knows no locked doors. We can understand perfectly what was going on with the disciples locked in an upper room. And we can prepare for opening back up. Prepare for risk, for adventure, for joy in the opening of our doors and even more, the doors of our hearts. People are dying still in prisons and homeless camps and isolated in lonely rooms. Our Easter breath tells the story for anyone locked down, for anyone locked out of love and care. Good news, for anyone who has not heard it lately, for ones who are hiding in shame and guilt, whether it is our own or a mess that was piled onto us, good news, we cannot be locked away from the risen Christ. That eternal blessing is present. We can't lock it out. Thomas wasn't there. He wasn't locked up with them. But when he heard the story, he found it too good to be true. He may have been cautious because he didn't want to risk another heartbreak. That's big. But he was locked out of their heart learning also. More good news. When Jesus and Thomas meet, Jesus asks no question about worthiness, justification, sanctification, explanation, creeds, theological perfection, or any other insider qualifications. Again, Jesus intimately surrenders his wounds. Look, touch, here are my most hurting places. Touch and see that it is me, broken yet whole. Given this close experience of breath and sight and touch, Thomas made a startling discovery. My Lord and my God. The Gospel of John was written for us for our difficulty in receiving that which we have not touched with our hands or received on our breath. No, we didn't meet the historical Jesus, yet we may find life in Christ. We may rise up with healing on our breath, just like Jesus. We are meant to notice that Thomas came late to the welcome table and even showed up saying he didn't believe this stuff. He wasn't even hungry. And he got fed anyway. Don't we want to be this latecomer to see and touch and hear along with him? My Lord and my God. Maybe I am so moved by Thomas's words because like Thomas, I missed Easter too but not just one. I missed more than 20. I not only missed the big moments, I missed all the moments. I had to risk what felt like everything in order to receive forgiveness and healing 
for my heart of stone. I did, and I still do. And that is good news for all of us who are locked out, locked in for any reason. This gift does not ever expire. It is never too late to take that first step again and again if necessary. I don't take this for granted, not anymore. So what did I miss by skipping decades of not only Easter, not only Christmas, but everything in between? I missed the forgiveness of sins, my own and others. I missed a community of forgiven forgivers. When I don't feel forgiven, it's hard for me to take pro proper responsibility for my actions and inactions. I am frozen. Either it's all my fault or it's all somebody else's fault. I will retain my shame like Peter. You and I will know the way, that is, discover the truth about our lives on earth through the power of our faith community in our own time, through its power to forgive and to heal, hard as it sometimes is. First, we accept forgiveness of our own locked up or locked outness. Our job on earth is to love, to be in relationship with God and with each other and with ourselves. Not always so easy, is it? Forgiveness is the way, available to all of us, no matter what. Then we are locked onto the light, the truth, the way. We are human, and so we cannot live up to the divine spark within us. We lose harmony with ourselves and our earth. We break relationships. We fail. We become alienated. We need forgiveness. The practice of forgiveness at close quarters is a great reason to go to church. It's easier than with your family, but harder than with strangers. Spiritual community is a fertile place for grace. As I lock in on your forgiveness of me and God's forgiveness of me, I am able to go on and live another imperfect day seeking harmony within and without, seeking to live in balance, in the flow. We may be shut down, locked up, locked out, and we are invited to lock onto the never-ending love together. This is the path to freedom to love, to take on the forgiveness of sins. This is big. I need to feel my forgiveness, my freedom, in order to take responsibility for the ways in which I create disharmony and suffering. We need to forgive ourselves so that we can move on and begin again. When we accept ourselves, in all our weaknesses, flaws, and failings. We can begin to fulfill an even more challenging responsibility, accepting the weakness, limitations, and mixed upness of those we love and respect. Then we become able to accept the weaknesses, defects, and shortcomings of those we find it difficult to love. When I locked myself out, I missed taking God's shalom into the world with every breath and with every action, in a world racked by hunger, illness, killing fields, speaking peace is difficult. But we can do it together. The peace that comes from prayer and practice aids our struggle to become people who speak and make peace. We learn this among each other from giving and receiving, from paying attention. May our gatherings be places where we can know ourselves forgiven, 
where we can know the risen Christ in our midst. The healing of everything broken has begun. May we together breathe the risen Christ, my Lord and my God. Thank you.